I knew that I had to be all in with it, and um, I was trying to create buzz. Listen, I didn't want to get fired from WWE at the time, but I'm like, I either want to get noticed by them or get fired and use that buzz to go to like TNA or something. I just knew right. like, I have to be all in with this. Like you can't, you can't be half pregnant, as Michael Hayes says. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be all in. Yeah, you gotta be all pregnant. This is the word to go, yo. go. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Grown Ass Women TV. So Cal Val here. Mickey James is here as well. We are missing our gal, Lisa Marie Barron, who is out sick today. Unfortunately, sent her all the love. Mwah, we love you, Lisa. But we are here to party tonight. As we start the show, please do us a favor. You know the drill. If you're here in the live chat, thanks for being here. Or even on replay, do us a favor and like this video. Very important. Subscribe. Yep. That's the most important. And ring our bell, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, I got it right here. Ooh. Ring, ding, ding, ding. Ring, ding, ding, ding. And if you are a first time viewer, watcher here on God TV, we have all kinds of fun things that we like to do here on the show. We have Patreon. We have a members only section right here on YouTube. Um, it's been a lot of fun. And obviously we have the live chat. So hello everyone in the live chat. But we're going to do a special giveaway today here on God TV. And that is, we have a very special guest coming on today. It's taken a long time because he's a pretty big deal. He likes to think of himself as a pretty big deal, a king of the indies, if you will. Yep. And so we thought we would do an awesome giveaway if you are watching today. I know we see you in the live chat. Slide it on over. Go to the comments section and type in Major Bendy, all caps. Major and we're gonna Bendy. Be one lucky winner. And we're going to send you a free gift from Lisa, from myself, and from Val. Um, so yay, cheers, good luck, good cheers. luck there. We'll be looking for those comments, but without further ado, as you see, the hat game is strong today. You guys, please welcome to God TV for the first time ever, the king of the Indies, Matt Cardona. Matt oh. Cardona, welcome to the party. Oh, cheers. I'm here. I missed Thank the, so uh, the cowboy hat memo, huh? Um, well, because Matthew, I was, I honestly thought, well, but you have headphones because he's a pro. You can't wear headphones with a cowboy hat, mm -hmm. but I was going to talk about, um, your hat game recent, you know, your hat game really and the hat heat. Hat. And I, because their first question is usually, you know, who you wear and what you drink in. And I kind of, yeah, about the hat, you know. Oh. Uh, right. Who am I wear? I'm wearing all my own merch because it's yeah, free you are, and it's advertisement for my stuff. I'm drinking uh, a Seven Eleven water that I Uber eats to my house. Wow, that is Erica Schmancy. Yeah. Is that down? What is well, that? I, a great, I, is it great value? What kind of water is that? Seven Eleven. Oh, the Seven Eleven. I, I didn't just. I didn't just order one bottle. I got the whole case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One bottle would have been extreme to just uber eats one bottle of water uh, oh but you say so you went for the case whole case yeah. just in case that's right first world problems well we love to ask our guests who are you wearing what are you drinking we now know that you are a 7-eleven fan sponsorship coming soon but yeah. can you describe which shirt this is because i'm sure we can get it online but what who all's on there let's see oh this is the uh the figure story it's kind of like the major recipe for a podcast but toy story has myself brian myers hornswoggle chelsea green before she went back to new york um, I don't think you can buy it anymore. I think it's uh, uh, a retired T-shirt. It's exclusive. Closet, exclusive. Ooh. And then this is a hat. Major Reservoir Podcast hat. We have a live show coming up. This is the hat from the live show, January 7th in Orlando, Florida. It's gonna be oh, my God. Amazing. Dude. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, first off, your podcast is crazy. Like, it's so – I'm so happy for you. It's so successful. And obviously, you love action figures. That's this right. is your setup behind you. Yeah, we just did a giveaway. We we did a special giveaway for you today on today's episode with Major Bendy being the you have to put in all caps Major Bendy oh, in yeah. the section yeah. because sure we're still working on slaughter Major Bendy coming soon. How about that? You got to get an R. Does RVD have a Bendy yet? No, he has a WWE Legends deal, so we can't sign him. Darn, because um, he because he always we always talk about how he's bendy and flippy, so this makes yeah, a lot of sense. Nice. Right? Can I ask where your um? I my, I'm not doing anything, by the way, as far as what I'm wearing. I just wanted to be kind of Christmassy and wintry. Yeah, and I'm very um, uh, very Christmassy. That's where you get the tree. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And my acid trip wallpaper that's like 
the feature wall. Love but that bit, wallpaper. Yeah. Love that. I have a whole story of me being on like Kokoda Mall and I was like, it's coming for me. Uh, so it's not a good story. Yeah. <laughs> Prescribe Kokoda Mall, just for those listening at home. It's getting weird. No, but uh, I have to ask you, if I may, where did your love of action figures begin? Because, you know, I do a lot of comic cons, right? So yeah. I think of action figures from wrestling, but they're they're everywhere. So where did they're your everywhere. love of it start? I mean, as a kid, I, I just played with them, right? Mm-hmm. I just played with them. I, I love them. I collected other things besides wrestling, you know, Ghostbusters, Ninja Turtles. But wrestling was my number one because I could create what I call figure federations you know my own i booked my own towns yeah. you know you keep the my, territory yeah i'd keep the title histories i'd, I'd play the entrance music i have them walked out and then once i got too old to play with them i would still like buy them and collect them but it wasn't cool to do at mm-hmm. all like I'd, I'd i'd hide it i wouldn't i was in high school you know buying wrestling figures it was not the cool thing to do i wasn't proud of it you know i was doing it i literally my closet, you open up my closet in my bedroom, they were all on display. I was a closet wrestling figure fan. You Literally. Know, really, awesome. Yeah, you couldn't bring like a girl back to your your well, your parents' house, be like, hey babe, <laughs> look at my, my cool setup. You know, now Come you hang can. out in my room with me and yeah, play with my now, action figures. Me and all my friends. <laughs> and then, you know, I got into wrestling, actually like, training, and that's where I met Brian Myers, and we found out we were both collecting figures like in hiding. And that's that's what so broke the funny. Ice. Uh, between us and then we just kept collecting and you know 20 years later we have a podcast about it <laughs> that's so short. crazy i was because that was gonna be my question too is like did because you and brian do the podcast together and obviously you guys have been uh pretty much like synonymous with each other pretty much the whole time i've known of you guys right so right. Did, did that start did you already know that and i didn't know that whole history so i thought maybe that you guys got paired together with the rated R superstar when that whole, when you came in and debuted, I didn't realize that you guys had this friendship and stuff all that time. I didn't know. No, so, so we grew up like 20 minutes apart on long Island, but we didn't know each other. We're the same age. We both went to the same wrestling school. Um, but we didn't like each other at first because we viewed each other as competition. You know, right. I don't think many people get into the business to be a fucking tag team wrestler. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like we were competing with each other, same age, same kind of look, same physique. And then, uh, you know, the wrestling figures broke the ice between us personally. And then Mikey Whipwreck, who was our trainer, he threw us together as a tag team because we looked alike. Right. Um, and then we ended up getting signed together, got called up to the main roster together, did the edgehead thing together. But even like when we yeah. were on the, the road for WWE, we were still buying wrestling figures. But you couldn't talk about that. You couldn't be like, hey, JBL, look what I picked up. He fucking oh, shit in it. He'd shit right in that fucking Jack's ring and throw it out into the, the hallway with all my back. You couldn't do that, but it was a different yeah. time then. You know, it was different. Yeah. Time. And I'm not judging those guys. Those guys didn't grow up with it. They didn't right. grow up, yeah. you know, with the ice cream bars and the bed sheets and the toys. And so the now, you know, 20 years later, almost everybody's in the locker room grew up with that stuff. So they Right. Yeah. It certainly wasn't accepted to bring your action figures. No. You're backstage to talk no, about all your collectibles, yeah. You know, publicly. Now, if it's I ever bring something to the locker room now, the majority of people, whoa, I had that, or you know, where did yeah. you get that? Where back in the day, there's no fucking way you could have. Yeah. What is up with that? Like, I, I, I got a lot of flack for things like that too. Like, you know, wanting to get like wrestling shirts and whatever, and it's like, oh, you're you're a Mizark and blah, blah blah. And I'm like, but I love, of course, I love the merch because I love wrestling, and that's why I'm in wrestling. I didn't just decide to like step into it. It's so. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from? That sort of weird like reticence to admit that you're a fan because it still goes on even nowadays. I don't know if it's a thing where the newer generation is more accepting or less accepting. But what do you think? I think they're definitely more accepting of it now because it's just a new generation. Like I said, guys like. Bob Holly and JBL, they didn't chase the ice cream man down for those wrestling ice cream bars, you know, so they couldn't relate to it. <laughs> Wait, and I'm not had, blaming I them. I lived in Montpelier. I didn't have a wrestle an ice cream truck. I don't oh know. Oh my what god, they were wrestling 80s, 90s. You never had a WF wrestling bar? No. No. Holy shit. Oh my You're god. not living. Oh no. You're not living. What's the most obscure item that you have? Oh merchandise wise. Oh my god. I have a whole garage full of obscure shit that I'm actually trying to sell because, like, do you really need the Lawrence Taylor football from WrestleMania 11? You know, I have it, but why? <laughs> like, weird stuff like that. I have yeah, WCW. Yeah. If you don't know if you're going to be either horrified or impressed, from the 99 cent store in LA, I have WCW. Nash is mainly prominently uh, featured. Bubblegum. Dude, they made Here. everything during that attitude era. That's so yeah. funny. 
Please Is it consider feet? watching comment below with your most obscure collector's item because it's going to get wacky. My first question to you, Matt, was going to be, why do you hate me? No, I don't hate you. I think you're What is the hat right? heat? There's no hat heat. I have an Indiana Jones S cat that's not a cowboy hat, totally different hat. It's kind of the same. Um, and I, I don't hate you a bit. I think you're you have a very creative mind. Like for instance, this this past impact run, you had this great idea. Hey, this farewell tour, I'll retire when I lose, but then you never lose. You just beat everybody. Oh great <laughs> idea. That's what I'm what? gonna steal for my retirement tour. I have this great idea. I'll retire when I lose, but then I never lose. That's the gimmick. <laughs> she shouldn't have to apologize for being a winner. I am a winner. Just everybody wins the belt. Yeah, because it's still real to me, damn it. I do. Great I can idea. beat everybody. I think it's a great yeah. idea. No, I love you. Bad. We, we always, he gives me so much shit. He has always given me shit, especially at Impact Wrestling. Um, Every day. Every I'm day we were but I'm I enjoy, so I love you. Mad. I think you're amazing. Oh, you I really so do, Matt. And I'm so I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you, dude. You've been killing it everywhere you go, King of the Indies. I do like. I thought this might be I, apropos too, uh, Matt, because I saw that metallic or that bronze like skeleton mask that you wore. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of cool. Very cool. I can't see or breathe, but it looks cool. That's all. Right. Matters. Only for the entrance, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. You cannot wrestle yeah. that. You can barely, barely Try. see do my entrance. Yeah, that's it. Entrance <laughs> only. Oh no! Yeah, it was really cool. Did you have who made that for you? Did you have that like design? I'm not. I'm not, I'm not giving that away because then someone else is going to get something similar. Something. You know what I'm saying? I love. I was, I was actually going to get one vest. similar made, but then yeah, put crystals on it, rhinestones yeah. and tassels close to the vest. <laughs> Me too, with faux fur and feathers. I like the Nathan Lane of wrestling. I really am. Um, I was just going to say earlier that I'm actually very sad that we've never shared a locker room. I've never been in like a company with you, but of course I followed your career and I would be totally uh, in, in the doghouse if I, I did not mention that my husband said, oh my God, Matt Cardona, please tell him that, which I think is a pretty cool compliment, that he was not watching. He watched it a bit like when he was younger, then he kept hearing about you and was like, oh, and, and became a fan of yours and was like, oh, now I'll see what's going on with wrestling. And I said, that's so cool because- I get it. You have brought so many people into the wrestling world from the mainstream that might not have understood it or didn't think it was cool or you embraced sort of social media and, and made it so accessible to people. Do you hear mm -hmm. that a lot? Yeah, uh, for sure. And, you know, 2023, you got to be using social media. But, you know, when I first started using it, you know, back in the day, 2010 ish, I wasn't the first person on it, but I think I was the first person to really like blend my wrestling character with like my real life character you know yeah and uh it let people in because at the time you know i was on monday night raw already in the ring losing in like two or three minutes there's only so much i could showcase of my personality so right. with the with the social media and then eventually with the youtube show i started that was a way to kind of blend my real life persona with my wrestling persona yeah. Well, and I think you were the first person to really do that from the wrestling world, like to use social media as like this huge platform. I think everybody else was, we were still learning Twitter and all. Yeah. I'm terrible at it all. So I don't know, but I, I feel like you were the first one to real, really like capitalize on it. And then out of it, you see all of these people that are kind of doing podcasts and doing YouTube shows and all of these things out of it. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Well, I mean, even now I tell people all the time, it's like, Social media is free advertising. I don't know why yeah. people aren't using it, especially, you know, I'm not in WWE or AEW. I'm not on a national TV show. I need to promote myself. So, yeah, I'm, right. I'm always on social media. I'm always posting stuff. Like, maybe I post too much, but I don't care. I Whether you're, you're watching me on TV or you're just watching me at a show or you love me or hate me, you know that I exist. You know that I'm doing something. You know, you know right. something about me. That's because I'm shoving it down your throat. And that's yeah, the only right. way it's going to get done. There's yeah. no better way to put it than that, honestly. And it, it's so refreshing to hear. I always kind of say it's a terrible phrase, but for lack of a better term, I'm like, I'm going to whore myself out. Like, I'm going to show you that I'm doing this show and whatever. Yeah. And especially it's easier to get content on a day that you have a show or when you have something to promote. But I wish you could like do, I mean, maybe you do or you should if you haven't, do seminars on like social media because there's so many people, especially me being in the UK, yeah. you know, talking to kind of younger wrestlers. And some of them are like, well, I don't know if it's not cool. I don't want to just like, you know, overdo it. And I'm like, I don't, that is so foreign to me. I'd rather somebody do it you know more often or they'll they'll do the weird thing like that i think is a bit weird like oh i'll just wait for the promotion to then you know promote me and tag me and i'm like who are you waiting for just do it right 
Right. Yeah, I mean, listen, um, I try to treat every show that I'm on like it's a big deal because if I don't treat it like it's a big deal, then why is someone going to come see it? Bingo. Right. You know? Like if I don't post about it, listen, those cell phone promos promoters ask you to do, yeah, it's it's annoying and it sucks, but it's got to be done because if you don't make it a big deal, why is someone going to, you know, drive to go see it or order it on a streaming service? You know? Right. And then if you're smart about it, like you said, you film content there and then use that all week until the next show. Right. Because we always talk about, you've heard like batch filming where like you film on day, especially for, for girls, it's a thing like, yeah. right. It's, you know, we, we talk about Lisa and Mickey and I like, okay, so we've, we're already hair and makeup done. I'm sure Chelsea, we got to get to Chelsea in a moment. Oh yeah. my God, marking out. But like, we try to batch film on days we're already filming. So we have evergreen content that on a day right. we don't feel like filming, we don't have to, right? Exactly. Yeah. The, yeah. I have so much, co- I mean, content it, right now, like everyone's just on their phones, whether you want to admit it or not, like they are. So I don't know how the algorithm works, you know, but I just, I just right. post, I don't care if people like it. I don't care if they don't like it. Like I'm posting it and I don't yeah. know what's going to, you know, not everything's going to trend. Not everything's going to fucking break through, but I'm just posting what I want to post. And if you like it, great. If you don't like it, you saw it. So I don't care if you like it or not. Yeah. I wish everyone yeah. had that attitude, honestly. You know, you talk about like, well, going somewhere, if you don't make a big deal out of it, like, but you're showing up, you're everywhere. Yeah. You're everywhere, everywhere I turn. You're you're booked and blessed. Well, here's wow. the thing, too. It's booked like and blessed. I don't know if I'm working any more than anybody else on the indies, but I'm making people aware of it. Right. You know, yeah. like I'm not the only indie wrestler who wrestles multiple shows every weekend. A lot of people do, but I make you aware of it because I'm posting before, I'm posting after, I'm posting during. You know, I'm just post, yeah. post, 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 post. Yeah. 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 Also love too that you just don't um like you were saying earlier, like, oh, I don't I don't care. Like how long did it take you to get to that space where you stopped giving a shit? What, what? very early on, I just didn't yeah. care. Yeah, I just think okay. especially when I first started that YouTube show back in the day, I knew that I had to be all in with it and um I was trying to create buzz and uh-huh. I knew listen, I didn't want to get fired from WWE at the time, but I'm like, I either want to get noticed by them or get fired and use that buzz to go to like TNA or something. Like, I just knew right. like, I have to be all in with this. Like you can't, you can't be half pregnant as Michael Hayes says, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be all in. Yeah. You gotta be all pregnant be all or in. not. Yeah. That's you, can't be half, you can't be half pregnant. You can't. You got it. What do they say in that movie? You got to go. Uh, oh, I don't know if I should say it. it's from, it's from Tropic Thunder. I'll leave it there. You know what I'm saying? If you've seen the movie. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. Yes, that was nice. Time. Who do you think, if we can put some people over, because, you know, we're going to be nice and it's it's the holiday season and we're going to be sweet. Who do you think is really getting it right on social media, whether it's someone in wrestling or not? Who do you like follow or, or admire that you're like, they, they get it and they're doing the right, doing it the right way? Uh, I'm I'm going to speak to just indie people right now to give some people the right. I think Effie gets it a lot. If you guys are familiar mm-hmm. with Effie, he knows. I who do. He's do- uh, Joey Janela, I think his merchandise game is the shits. Joey Janela is so fucking unorganized. Comes to a, a, he's so popular, but then comes to a show and just like dumps a bunch of random t-shirts on a table. Like, no shit, you're not gonna make money, Joey. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but other, but he's very he's very good at, at marketing himself. Uh, Steph Delander, my heater. I think I know. I'm rubbing off on her, but I'm learning some tricks from her because sometimes she does things on social media. I'm like, how do you even do that? You know, because I'm yeah, I'm like ten years. So like it's the new trendy things I learned from her, but right. listen, it's, it's social media. It's free. It's a, but it's a double-edged sword. It's free for everybody. So how are you going to stand out? You know, it's free. It's great. You can promote yourself for free, but it's free for everybody. So yeah. There's all this competition. So how are you going to stand out? I don't know that you got to figure that out for yourself. Yeah. Well, guess what? I just learned last week um, from, I learned that Missy Hyatt is a huge Joey Janela fan oh, and yeah? she wants to manage him. On GCW. I did a GCW show with Missy Hyatt like two years ago. Yeah. yeah. She loves GCW. I don't want to bring it up because I know you're there. She's, I was like, what? You love it's GCW? My... I did not expect that to come out of her mouth. And she's like, I love Joey Janela. <laughs> she so, she's, she's been on God TV before. She's in my, in my top three. She's literally in part of my, my stage name. I mean, hello, Wyndham. It's like Hyatt yeah. Wyndham. I love her so much. She's amazing. We have to yeah. talk though about GCW and, you know, even all the way in the UK, I work for Progress Wrestling. We've had a lot of um, crossover with GCW and it's an amazing no Progress company. to respond to my email. Yeah. Hey, Progress, get on there. Just send it to me, bro. Well, they Uh asked my rate, and then the email stopped. Uh Oh. (laughs) Uh -oh. Uh-oh. I know the feeling. (laughs) What, bro? 
But yeah. we've had we've had some crossover there, and like honestly, because I worked with Fight, I kept seeing like GCW, and I saw it from the beginning, and it just kept growing and growing, and it was like the little company that could. And yeah. oh my gosh, how amazing is it doing? But tell us more about GCW if if people in the chat have not you know watched it before, which would be silly. um I, I would compare it to ECW, and I know that's like a mm -hmm. cheap comparison, but I really believe it's true. We're like when I first heard about GCW, and I was offered to go there, I was like, fuck no, I'm not going to that death match bullshit wrestling this criminal drug addict Nick Gage, like, no way. Uh, right. Then I, I thought about it for a second, like, wait a minute, like, people are going to tune in to see me get killed by this guy. Like, yeah, I, got, I have to do this. And it was only supposed to be this three show deal, but it, it changed my whole career, changed my life, changed everything. Just doing that, that one death match with Nick Gage, where now I call myself the death match king. I've only done one death match. I, I fooled all these marks. Like, oh, doing all these death matches now, but I, I did fucking what? Like relax, yeah. people. You know, I just know how to market myself. But but yeah. GCW, it's way more than the deathmatch stuff. Kind of like ECW is way more than the extreme stuff. There's great mm -hmm. technical wrestling. A, a lot of young talent guys like uh like Nick Wayne, who's an AEW now, came from GCW. Jordan yeah. Oliver, GCW. Then you have like guys gimmicks like Epi or Alley Catch, and then there's the Luchadors. Like it's a it's a mishmash of all different styles. And I truly think they're the number three promotion in 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 the world because they tour every single weekend and not just yeah. in one spot they're not just northeast they're every weekend all over the world like i've wrestled in england for gcw canada for GCW. they've gone to japan they've gone to mexico every weekend they have a show uh coast to coast so i i just fucking love gcw i wish brett lauderdale the promoter would pay me a little more but other than that i love it. <laughs> he's very nice yeah, I will say that I've only done one GCW show and I had I was I was like I because it was with Alley Catch and I, I was like, OK, I'll do it. Yeah. And it was but I was a little nervous the same. I was like, oh, I don't know about this because I'm certainly not doing anything crazy. And the most I'd seen because everything you see is on social media for the most right. part. So yeah. the gifts and the videos that you see were all like blood and gore and guts. And it's yeah. I cringe. It's hard for me. To, it was hard for me to watch you get blood. I even. True story. I messaged Matt and was like, oh, are you for mark. real right now? Are you real? I think that was what the cool, the thing was, is nobody expected you to go and do GC. I think that was the biggest show, yeah. like culture shock. At, like what kind of universe are we living in right now to yeah. see you there to do that kind of thing. But I even messaged him. and was like, are you sure? That uh, listen, I was afraid listening? too. Right before I walked through the curtain, I thought like, this guy might legitimately try to kill me and like GCW will try to trend on Twitter or something like they killed right. Zach Ryder, but stabbed you. It, it was a, just a, that night was wild. The, the, it was a bloodbath. Uh, you know, after it was crazy. Pants through garbage in the ring when I won, but you know, speaking of social media, that, that thing that was on fight TV, it trended number one on social media over the Olympics and a UFC pay-per-view. Like people wow. were, were watching, they were talking about it and it changed my whole career changed everything um because i knew once i got released from wwe you know i was doing impact and it was fine but it was like what am i doing like my name's not zach Ryder, but who am i i know i'm, I'm matt corona but who is matt corona you can't just like turn heel on the indies you know it doesn't really right like, we just come out as a bad guy like what it doesn't make sense so i needed something to to spark this change and, and that's that match is what sparked it where, you know, I'd go to these indie shows and like 25% of the people would boo me. Then like, then 50%, a couple of months later, then months later, hundred percent, no matter where I go, middle fingers in my face, people throwing stuff at me. And that, that's what I needed. Uh, where I don't even think I changed is the people's uh, reaction to me changed. Yeah. It's, it's so much yeah. fun. It's so much. They're fun. invested, dude. It's yeah. That's a it. testament to you and, and how you made them believe as Mickey said before, it's still real to them. Damn it. Can I ask you, Matt, because you, um because you are so, you know, uh, um, what's the word submerged for lack of a better term in wrestling. Cause like uh, Mickey and I talk about all the time. She's, you know, her husband's a wrestler. I I'm all the way in England. I do wrestling shows and I'm still involved, but like, it's interesting to see how people kind of still get are still in it and still not with you. You're very much still in it, but how do you sort of like switch on and off? Like, especially because your wife is in wrestling as well. So right. how do you separate? Is it, is it hard to kind of switch off? See, it's funny you asked that because when I was in WWE, it was very easy for me to switch it off because I discovered I, I made this up. I, this, is, this is how I rationalize it in my psycho brain that in, in WWE or I think like, you know, you could 
put AEW in there or, or Impact or any any mainstream wrestling company, there's only so much you can control, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I told myself, listen, like I can control my physique. Like nobody can say you can't work out hard or you know or be in great shape. Right. You can control your gear. No one's gonna say you can't look like a star. And your attitude. No one can say you can't be like in a good mood or be positive. So like, those were the only things I could control. And like, I drove to work. If they used me, great. If they didn't use me, great. Of course, I would pitch things, but the rest is kind of out of my hands. So when I right. left, I was able to turn it off. Mm. But now with the indies, I control fucking everything. I can't turn it off. Like, right. I cannot turn it off. I'm always thinking of ideas. I'm always thinking of things that I could sell or things to do in matches or just because I can control everything i'm my own yeah. boss so it's hard for me to turn it off but um it's fun though. i don't really it doesn't feel like work you know yeah it's, it's almost so like you say yeah that it's it's if you never if you yeah, love it you, you fall in back life, right? in love with wrestling or falling in love with it in a dupe because you become the master of your own you yeah 100 percent. and you know now we have our podcast about wrestling figures which has turned into a, a toy line about wrestling. i know figures, which is like what the fuck? Like, is that? It's crazy. We're making our own toys. Uh, now we're branching out. We're making non-wrestling toys. So, like, it, it, it's the coolest thing. It doesn't feel like That's I work awesome. at all. Like, you know, last week I had a a, a business meeting with the warlord about signing. Like, oh, like that's my job. Oh my god, I'm fucking talking to <laughs> warlord about signing a a deal for major bendies. Like, big fucking deal. Like, it's not really work, you know. Listen, if you need a god TV, look. I- we could use a God TV bendy line, you know, if you need action. Oh, you, I thought you had your own toy line, Mickey. What happened to that? I don't have my, no, listen, I don't have a toy line. No, what, what happened we to that? made this one genius. And this is before you got, okay, listen, There's this is before, before you, and you guys it. weren't getting a thing. This is not a thing. But after the Royal Rumble appearance, we had this genius idea of like, dude, Figures are so hot right now. Like, why don't we just make one? Of, we need to get one of those figures. I reached yeah. out to a couple figure companies about Not making me. it. Not me. And I didn't know that you were. The, I didn't know that you were doing the thing at that time. I thought you were just doing the podcast thing. Mm. I didn't know. I'm. Mm. I promise you. Listen. So Had then he- I'm like, oh my god, like Funko. I tried to. I talked to. I reached out to Funko. I reached out to a couple different things. Yeah. And I was like, dude. This is crazy. And so then Nick looked into it and he did some research. And so then we bought like 500 figures of they were made, they were done. And we did it for a one shot deal to see how they did. Yeah. How they do. Did not. I still have a bunch of figures. I'll tell you that much. They look like someone made them with fucking (laughs) Play-Doh. Well, Mickey's. We're cutting this out of the episode, damn it. <laughs> cutting it out. Well, Crazy. hosting Comic Cons in the UK, I always ask this question. And as a final question, I know we have to let you go because clearly you're a hustler and we're so proud to hear that. Just like Mickey and I are hustlers. <laughs> yeah, you're 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 really doing it. But uh final question for me, uh, I'll let Mickey close this out. But something I ask people at Comic Cons, and I, I love to know that celebrities like you love other celebrities and other fandoms too. We have, you know, so many things represented at Comic Con. We've got Star Wars, Star Trek, Harry Potter, Stranger Things. What kind of genres are you into? Like, who, what are your favorites? I know you mentioned Ninja Turtles. Yeah, Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, Star Wars. I think those are my top three. I love Stranger wow. Things. Um, this isn't really Comic Con stuff. But I love theme parks. I'm a big theme park guy. Yeah, me so, too. Like, I love it. Like, I'm obsessed with like Disney. Are the World, coasters Disneyland. or just the the? Do you like the coaster oh. part or do you like just oh. the theme park? Listen, You're me, a Disney guy. Back. I'm not. I don't love amusement parks. I love theme parks. Okay. You know? You know, Mickey, okay. I don't want, what are you, a roller coaster high five? I love you know, coasters. I'm an amusement oh, park. What a great coaster. Oh, she, she's she's the shit. kind of person that claps when it's over. And I'm like, ah, oh, oh, Jesus. Listen, I'm usually holding my heart when I, it's over. I love a coaster too. I love a good thrill, but give me some fucking theming. I want to like, like, like the Tower of Terror at Disney World. You want, you see it in the distance. The anticipation's there. You're fucking, holy shit. Look at that fucking hotel, that haunted hotel. You go in there, then you walk through the, the queue. The, the line and it's all themed there's that 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 pre-show video before then you have the ride then you exit through the theme gift shop you know yep. total immersion yeah yeah that's what, I like. that's what i appreciate a roller coaster high five see sure go to six that's where we're kind of opposite matt because i go like i feel like like disney it's cool you go it's great but it's all show no go you know, it's all oh, like I'm... bells and whistles the yeah, rides none of them are scary none of them thrill me 
like out of like crazy. Terror is terrifying. I, I'm with Matt on this one, but I have to ask you again. I said last question, but I have to because okay. I was describing this to progress people. I'm like, you don't understand because one of the guys has a Star Wars tattoo. And I'm like, have you heard of or been on? And I got to ask you, Matt, Rise of the Resistance. Yeah, I, I can't even count how many times I've been on it. The best theme park ride ever 100 percent. you it feels like you're part of the movie that that they take immersion to a whole new level on I that attraction grown men were crying i cried a little bit too but i'm it's telling unbelievable. you it's, i've never all i've wanted to do like you said like to be immersed i wanted to feel like i'm in a movie i have never in my life and i say to people don't go on youtube and see it before you do no, it you no, gotta, you gotta no. live it yeah bro you gotta I, live can it. Understand, I can understand why people don't like theme parks because you know they're expensive and the the long lines and it's hot that you're just not doing it right you know i'm a planner i plan i know, I know all the tips and tricks i listen to podcasts do you have like vip it. access at disney no, at this I do point not. no, no. I, do not. I, oh, I, like, I pay for my annual pass i do it just like everybody else i just know he goes doing. all the time i see you guys there all like i yeah. see you're always I, go, I, I, I don't go as much as i would like but i go uh-huh. i go often I, but yeah i do love what, going i think it's amazing i just think that yeah i'm not like the, the disney buff yeah it, it, but i do love all the movies I don't, that's the thing too like i'm not sitting on a friday night watching the fucking lion king you know yeah, but yeah. I, I love i love going to the parks i love everything about it because like i said i live here i live in orlando so i don't have to do everything on that one day i'm like you know what if i don't do space mountain i'll fucking i'll do it next time yeah you know, yeah if you were there for a vacation holy sh- you gotta fucking do everything. you're paying that money i understand but i yeah. live yeah. here i'll do fucking space mountain next time you know what i'm saying yeah. I could just cry my eyes out about Orlando and how much I love it and how that's the escape. You can just go to escape for the day. Oh my oh. God, to Orlando. That's, that's Orlando. Okay, maybe it, close I love Orlando. I don't think I'm ever leaving. I'm never going back to New York. Orlando for life, baby. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. 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 Well, I'm like, mm-hmm. I did. I, we did go. I did have an annual pass when we lived in Orlando for that brief amount of time. Orlando is probably my one of my least favorite cities in Florida. What? You're landlocked. I because you're landlocked. It's all tourists. Oh, to be outside, it's all Disney that. World. It's all tourists. It's There's only, no all tourists. You're in what, hot, are you fucking, what are you on? I drive. Fuck, don't don't hot live on I drive. Central Florida with yeah, the bugs. Hot. Turn on the air conditioning. Sweating and no beach within miles. Thank God. Drive, drive 30 minutes to Cocoa Beach. Yeah. Listen, yeah. this this girl okay. wants to be outside on purpose. I don't understand it either. I don't know what she's <laughs> On that note, Mickey, I, I'll, I'll let you close because I know that you, unfortunately, I have not had as much experience with Matt Cardona, but I'm such a fan of yours. Mickey, okay. close us out with some beautiful words from Matt Cardona. Your appreciation. Oh, Matt, thank you. Oh, we love you. No, it took a long time to get Matt booked because, you know, he's a busy man. He's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we appreciate we we love you and I and oh, I well, thank you for, for coming me. on. Yeah, yeah. And, this is so maybe, fun. Maybe maybe we'll you know get you in the major Bendy's line since that other thing that's been on Play Doh didn't sell too well. We can uh we can get your real figure. <laughs> Play Doh Gate. <laughs> Play Doh no, Gate. We promoted it on the podcast. You know? No, you did. I appreciate you it. Did. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was like, oh God, this is a real thing. But yeah, well, that's not how you. Were. <laughs> but I didn't say that. I thought that. I just say. Yeah, that. no, but your face did. No, your words yeah. didn't say your face. it. Face it. <laughs> well, dude, Mickey, you're a your action figure. Woof. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Got it. <laughs> Either way, cheers to you. You're a hustler. Dude, we're so proud that. of you. Thank you. Love to Chelsea. We love her. I love her too. I know. Me too. No, we love her more. It's okay. <laughs> this is the word. Go, yo, go. go.